Well, um, this has been an interesting time. I think everybody's seeking to find out what is the Lord doing. You know, what what was he thinking? What's he doing? And I keep reminding everybody that in the midst of all the things that we've gone through, we have to remember when if the Lord is in charge and he's put us in charge, okay, it's us. The failure is us, okay, because we had a prayer failure. We had, uh, the best way to describe it is, I don't think the multitude of people that were even uh, so much for Trump had any idea of the level of evil that was in the organizations. <clears throat> because all they could see is, and let me phrase this correctly, all they could see is this was an election in America about Trump or not Trump. And what they're not understanding is these are steps that I'll call them the global elite. They have been making steps for years and years and years. And people just ignore it. You know, we talked about Agenda 21 30 years ago and tried to tell people, you, you're not understanding what they're doing. You're not understanding. They have systematic plans, Davos. They have systematic plans of how they are going into each group of nations and slowly taking them over so that they can do what they want to do for a planet. Okay. And the, the whole point is they use a lot of streams. They will use any streams that they can. They use the feminist streams. Okay. They use the environmental streams. They use the... Uh, genocide streams, okay? They use all these different streams and they encourage each one of them that they are uh, going to advance their agenda, okay? But at the same time, they just use them. That's the bottom line across the board. And so this has been, what happened with Trump is they didn't have an, any understanding of how many people were fed up and would come out and vote. So they couldn't do their election fraud thing because they didn't have they had it somewhat planned, but they didn't have it planned enough. So the problem was he took them by surprise. And from day one, okay, they have been doing everything they could because he's gotten their agenda off. Okay. The timing was off. Now he's messed up things and he pulled them out of things and and all of this other. So they tested, if you want to be really honest, they tested the waters with Obama to see if they could elect a nobody and people would let it happen. And they would let that nobody control whatever he wanted to control. He was never in control. Yeah. Does everybody understand that? Right. Okay. And now they've even proven when they saw we would, they've even given us a greater, you know, what? nobody. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you get that. I've seen the social distance right. And what what is so frightening to me, and I don't mean worrisome, I mean frightening, is the fact that a multitude of people have always thought we were in a conspiracy theory. They when I would explain to them about global agendas or about you know, they they just look at you like, Well, you're a nutcake, you know. Mm -hmm. You don't know what you're talking about. This is America. And what's happened now is they have come in and they are so organized in D.C. right now. Mm -hmm. It is like a well-oiled machine. It has nothing to do with your current president. Let me make that abundantly clear. Mm -hmm. uh, 45 executive orders on the first. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. two weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, that's yeah. not that person that was in the basement. Okay, that's not that person. Uh -huh. So what we have is an interesting situation where the Lord is trying to wake us up. Okay. Uh, it's like how I've said for years, the Chamber of Commerce was used greatly by this group. Greatly. Okay. Don't get me wrong. Gary was the president of the Chamber. I'm not, you know, I had to pray for him and straighten him out a hundred times, but no. Yeah. <laughs> because he, he didn't see the deeper thing. Okay, 
he would just see the current thing, okay? It's like, you remember when we had um, the school to work, was that the name of it? The one where you, you signed a thing saying, as businesses, what was, was that what it was called? I, can't, I think it was school to work. It was where the chamber was come in and sold a bill of goods saying, if you will encourage all these businesses, because they're always griping because they don't have enough intelligent workers. They don't have enough workers that can actually hire to do their businesses. And if you'll get them to sign this particular document that it says that we're going to train up these kids to go work in their places, okay, is basically what it was doing. What it was, though, is they were signing a Common Core education document saying we want the education to be Common Core and then we'll hire these people, okay? Never having any clue that they were using the chamber to back up what the NEA was bringing in for Common Core so they could do the whole thing. And I'm like screaming and hollering, and Gary says, that's a good thing, we need workers. And I go, but they sell the bill of goods for whatever you need. Uh -huh. They don't ever tell you the rest of it. Okay, and I said, but this is what they're saying. They're saying, if you don't have somebody that's got a Common Core diploma, which was where they were headed, then you wouldn't hire. So, yeah, so they were working all these angles. So I was like, you've got to understand. And then they would do all this lovely managing the cities things, okay, where they would come in and call it sustainable uh you know, economy and growth. And they were managing the cities. They were deciding where went what, you know, where you could build certain things and how you had to focus on things. And they would actually encourage these chambers and most of the cities, they would come into most of the city's government and encourage them to come online with this global plan that was gonna help America be ready for the future, okay? And people just, I'd say, this is part of the globalist agenda. And they'd go, no, it's not. We're just pre preparing. We're thinking ahead. And I go, no, we're not. <laughs> this is and, and so this has become a huge problem. Okay. If you don't know about Davos, you need to start digging in. Okay. Because I'm telling you right now, <clears throat> this is the global agenda. This is what happened with the EU. This is, this is how they came into the EU. And they, you know, in, in the different countries, they couldn't even decide what they grew for, for harvest crops anymore. They were told by the EU, you can grow this and you can grow this, even if you've grown it for years. In some places, they were only told, you can only paint your houses certain colors. You guys hearing this? Mm -hmm. And that's EU, okay? And we just don't grasp the whole thing. So here we are in a place where everybody's grieving and, you know, all upset about what the election looks like. And I'm like, you need to wake up because it's a bigger agenda and it's coming hard and it's coming fast. Yeah. And they're slowly doing what they can as fast as they can. And so those of us who have kind of been in this for 20, 30 years, going, you know, how do we stop this? How do we, you know, literally stop this? What dawned on us was this, is that they're, they're uh, turning their agenda up faster. They are really, something's making them a little fearful. Okay. Something's making them go, wait a minute, we got to get this, we got to use this momentum we've got here and we got to do it now. So, that's what's it's so let me explain to you what i perceive is happening <clears throat> we have a spiritual realm that all of these globalist elite if you know anything about illuminati and occultic and satanic and all that they are getting constant information from the spirit realm okay you need to know that now what that spirit realm is obviously telling them is something's rising. Something's coming to challenge you that you better get your act together and get your stuff in place because it's coming and it's, as, as they all know, 
if it ever gets its act together, they have no grounds. So it convinces all these people that they need to do momentum. They need to do it faster. They need to get it done faster, no matter what it takes to get it done. No matter if they have to lie, steal, cheat, kill, it makes, hear me, it makes no difference because they must advance their agenda quickly. I personally believe that what those things are seeing is the victorious, glorious church. And I believe that as they have begun to take their place, that is the only thing that will stop this. You can't stop this in the natural. You've seen too many people flake out, haven't you? Because they know they, they don't have enough in them to overcome that. And they are literally choosing their family's lives. I hope you understand that. They are literally choosing their family's lives because this machine is big and it's ugly and it's coming in to hurt, okay? That's why you see judges flipping. That's why you see senators flipping. That's why you see House of... Because what they are choosing and <clears throat> what this entity does is because it has so many streams it's feeding, it just flips one stream and says, go bother them, okay? Or flips another stream and says, go terrorize them. And it's, it's like that, all right? So in doing this, somewhere inside of us, we've got to ask the question, what are we doing to advance the glorious, victorious church? What are we doing? <clears throat> and, you know, God keeps um, messing with me on a pretty much daily basis, sometimes thousands of times a day. And this is what he keeps saying to me. This is it. This is it. This is it. And I go, this is it what? Okay. <laughs> I mean, I've known this is it for a long time, but what is this it? Okay. <clears throat> and I believe he has got a multitude of people just like me that have been called years and years ago. We've been, we've been trained for 30 and 40 and 50 years, some of them have been. And they've been trained for truly such a time as this. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> when you look at what my calling scriptures are, my calling scripture is Isaiah 60. Okay. And it doesn't get any more specific than this glorious church. It's talking about we've got to get the light into this church so that it can light up and be who it's supposed to be. Um, it's talking about the nations. It's talking about, and I just <clears throat> brought some of my stuff today. We did a whole seminar last fall uh, at HAPN on the Glorious Victorious Church. That was our whole entire conference was talking about it. And God was specifically saying, but <clears throat> if this is, this is what I want you to listen to in terms of what I'm telling you this morning. Arise and shine for your light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people. Those are two different words for darkness right there. But the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light and the kings to the brightness of your rising. The wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. I will glorify the house of my glory to bring your sons from afar, their silver and their gold with them because he has glorified you. Therefore, your gates shall be open continually that men may bring to you the wealth of the Gentiles, but you shall be named the priest of the Lord and they shall call you the servants of God and you shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. In their glory, you shall boast." Now, that's paraphrasing pretty much the whole Isaiah 60. Why that's so important is because <clears throat> everything he's put in me is for this moment. Okay? It's like all my other battles were just preparations for battles. This is my battle against darkness. This is my battle against bringing the light. This is my battle to get the body of Christ to wake up and see what the true picture is. 
that we are not battling a president. We are battling an evil agenda that Satan and all of his cohorts has put together to do everything he can to stop the Christians from taking their place. And that's what you're about to see. Chuck says by April, what are we going to be in? Did anybody hear it? War. War. I'm thinking, someone said to me, so what we're in right now is it war? <laughs> <laughs> I go, Will. He says that every day. He does say that, yeah, but he I does, know. but he does say it specifically oh, okay. for April. He does say it for April, though. He specific. I mean, he, we're in war. If you don't know you're in war, we'll need to talk at a different time. <clears throat> we are in war, and that's a constant state of being. So in this state of being, you have to learn how to go to the front lines, then come back and rest. Are you all listening to me? If you go on the front lines and try to stay on it, you'll wipe yourself out. You can't do that. So it is a combination of going to the front lines doing what your assignment is, coming back and resting, and, and making that transition back and forth, always and always. <clears throat> the problem is we have got to get the strategies of the Lord. To get the strategies of the Lord means we cannot do it down here. The Word says we live in two places at the same time. We all know that. In physics, we call it non-locale. It means you are actually in two places at the same time. So I want you to think of that. Most of you can't fathom being somewhere other than rooted to this gravity. But your spirit is screaming and crying, trying to tell you, I go in and out. <laughs> okay. My spirit, my soul, they're blinking in and out. So there is in as much time they could be with Jesus as they are down here with these humans. I want you to think about that for a minute. That's such a hard concept for most people to get because it happens in such a nanosecond you don't realize it. But it's why so many people like uh, Papa Hagen, <coughs> Kenneth Hagen, we used to say he really wasn't any good down here on earth. <laughs> he couldn't make very good decisions, okay? <laughs> he just had a seriously hard time being down here. Because he chose to be aware when he was there. And when he was there, he, round, he just so loved that place so much more, he made it his house. And so he really didn't come down here and play with the humans. If it hadn't been for his son, he'd have never built Rama, Even though everything was from him, it was that administrative part. It was that natural part. So... What I'm trying to tell you is somewhere in your life, you've got to stop making this the principle, this natural realm the principle. You've got to make that realm the principle. Okay, It's your principal state of being. It's your principal place. And it's going to take a while for you to recognize what's going on in that realm. Okay, Because you're comparing it to this one. You're comparing to this one all the time. So what he's trying to say to us today is, as I shared with you in the beginning, we have a situation which we are not going to be able to do what God is wanting us to do if we don't come into that other place. Uh, for the victorious, glorious church, the glorious, victorious church, to take her place that is the only thing that's going to come against this global agenda. Um, I'll send out some information about Davos to Selena so she can post it with us. I'm, I'm hesitant to do it because they are so watching everything. <laughs> okay. and, but you need to know. You need to really honestly be aware. Okay. You need to know they've already got names for everything. They've got vocabulary. They've got agendas. Uh, if you've not been studying it, you're going to be blown away to see how much you participated in it, not realizing you were part of their agenda mm -hmm. in your thinking because they control the media to give you that mindset. Uh, they control the education to give you that mindset. 
And so you're going to have to make some hard shifts to come out of that. That's what I'm talking about in these two realms or state of beings. You're going to have to make some hard shifts to not be so rooted in the natural that you can't hear what he's saying to do in the spirit. Because you're half and half. Why do we function so much in the natural if we're half and half? If we're with him half the time and we're here half the time, why do we only think of ourselves or focus on ourselves here? Because that's how we were trained. Because that's how we were trained. Exactly. We were trained to stay in this natural mindset and, and believe like that. We know that he's trying to get us to do that. So let me give you the next piece of where I think we are. <clears throat> to be a glorious, victorious church, somewhere the glory of God's going to have to show up. Can we all agree? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> now, the, there is no Hebrew word for presence. Let me restate that. When you read in your Bible the presence of God, when you talk about the presence of God, there is no Hebrew word that's for presence. The word is for face-to-face. The word presence is panim. It means face-to-face. So, you know, that's kind of where we are right now. We're all treating God as if, well, I can't really be in his presence because he'll zap me because I got so much sin in me. Okay, because woe is me, I'm a poor sinner. Right? Okay. <clears throat> what he's wanting to shift on that is your understanding that he desires to be face to face with you. He desires to look into your eyes. He desires to, because you know the minute he looks in your eyes, he's going to know everything you did. Hello, how many of you avoid those eye contact things? <laughs> Gary tells me that's my biggest problem. He said, if I would stop making eye contact with everybody, I wouldn't get caught in so many problems. <laughs> does he want to put a hood on you? He does. He goes, just smile at them, but look right through them. Look around them. Don't look in their eyes. <laughs> Because the minute I do, I see, okay? And that just makes me go, oh, wow, let me. (laughs) Okay, so this is where God is trying to say, we have got to get to a place where we are willing to look face to face in God's eyes. We are willing to do that transfer, that spiritual transfer we talk about all the time. Because that's what's supposed to be happening. What's supposed to be happening is we're using and losing more and more of our natural stuff and choosing the spiritual stuff so that the spiritual stuff can overrule the natural stuff. I was uh, probably about, I don't know, about four weeks ago. um, I'm going to explain, I'm going to try to explain. A lot of times when I have attacks come against me, specifically physical attacks. What the Holy Spirit will do is he will make me aware of this is coming, okay? And uh, in this particular case, it was a cold. I could feel the cold symptoms. I mean, you you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And I could feel them coming. And it was like a little slow move, like, okay, you know what this is. This is what, do you have time for this? And instantly, because of all the years he's worked with me, I said, nope, (laughs) stop right there. You are going to have to leave, back up, get away from me. And I literally prayed in the spirit and prayed those symptoms, for lack of a better word, prayed those symptoms until I felt them leaving me. Because what we do is we feel them and go, I'm getting a gold. And the minute we do, we've given permission for it to come. But if we are aware of it, just like that, then we can literally say to it, uh, no, that was a nice attack, but it isn't going to work. Move it back. And you can literally begin to, in the spirit, take those symptoms and literally push them off of you. Do you understand what I'm saying? But most of us won't do that because we just think, well, that's natural. You know, this is what it goes. And I've literally had to sit and battle at times in the spirit until they leave. Okay, because I don't have time for this. I don't have time for that kind of stuff. So it's like that in the same thing. In the Garden of Eden, I want you to understand what God's original design was for all of us. In the Garden of Eden, 
God's glory permeated everything. Every cell of everything. Not just when he came to visit. <laughs> okay. Every cell in Adam and Eve was filled with glory. If the glory was there, sickness couldn't be there. Deficits couldn't be there. <coughs> Do you get that? In the trees, they were filled with glory. In the fruit, they were filled with everything, everything, wind, water, everything would have been filled with his glory, which is those other dimensions, those places way out there that you and I still have a hard time finding, okay? But they were all there. So when God removed himself from them, can we recognize that? In the garden when they fell, he basically had to get away from them. Because we understand now, if he had stayed in their presence, he had probably killed them. Mm -hmm. Just because the glory couldn't handle the other, and it would have killed it. So we understand that, but what we don't understand is that's supposed to be reversed right now. Because we've lived without his glory in every cell of our body, we get so excited when we're in his presence, don't we? We get so excited when we're in the place where, oh, can you feel it? Can you feel the presence? Can you feel the glory? Can you feel the heavy? And you're so excited about that. Do you realize that's what you're supposed to be in all the time? That's supposed to be your state of being. But we can't handle that. Most of us are on the floor, <laughs> right? Because what happens when his presence comes? When his presence comes, we feel the weightiness of it, which is called kavod. That's what it means. We feel the weightiness of it. So our little spiritual muscles aren't strong enough to hold us up, and we just kind of grumble and just soak it up. Don't we? Yes. Okay, I'm just saying true. Okay. <laughs> But what he's wanting us to be is glory carriers, correct? Yes. How are we going to carry this glory if we keep falling on the ground? <laughs> How are we going to carry it out to the streets or to the businesses or to our work or to our families? True. If we keep, no, well, I'm not great. And I'm not opposed to that because I like that place. It fills you up fast. So obviously we're not good at carrying the glory or we got sieves. You know, is the glory falling out of us as fast as it's coming into us? Can we carry glory? I mean, have you ever tried to carry water in a sieve? Does it work real well, does it? Or maybe we just have a hole in our bucket. <laughs> okay. Maybe we don't have a whole sieve anymore because the healing team has been working on us and we've got some of our deliverance done and... Now we just have a couple of holes <laughs> in our bucket. Okay, so you can try and stop the holes up, you know, with whatever. But if we are going to be like the original Adam and Eve, we've got to get used to every cell in our body carrying the glory. Every cell. So that means all this stuff that bombards us in the natural won't be able to take a hold of us like it used to. All these problems our children and grandchildren and family create every day, lovely things that they are. <laughs> we'll just go, praise God. He's got this. You're a grown person. <laughs> I will send a glory ball. <laughs> I have a friend that is just she's probably one of the most anointed people but she looks like one of those um, if you met her you would think she's just really not as into this world as we are okay <clears throat> because she seems almost like an absent minded granny <laughs> 
when that woman starts talking mm. and you start hearing the wisdom she has and who all she knows all over the world that will call her and say, I need you to pray. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you realize you're looking at the shell. Mm -hmm. You're not looking at who's in there because who's in there is a mighty warrior. But she laughs and talks about throwing glory balls. That's awesome. <laughs> so she says she just puts them together, kind of like snowballs, you know. And as the Lord shows, shows her what to do, she winds it up and she throws them. And they hit their targets, even in other continents. Okay. <clears throat> There's no distance in the spirit. So she suggests sometimes groups need to get together and make a huge, huge ball mm -hmm. and send that glory ball to its target. Mm -hmm. Let's do it. You realize that's what we're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. That's what the enemy is fearful of. Yeah. He realizes, he does know the end of the book. Mm -hmm. You guys get that? Mm -hmm. He does know his end. But he has not told his end to all these people that are under him. He's convinced the global elite, we can take over the world. He's convinced the Illuminati, you are the chosen ones. He's convinced all these people that I am God and I will get there. If you worship me, we will get there and we will take back and destroy God's family so that our family can be here. He realized that. Mm -hmm. But he full well knows the end of the book. Mm -hmm. So he's doing everything he can before that comes. Because he also knows that the answer to him is what God left on earth. And that's the church. Mm -hmm. That's you and I. <clears throat> if you think of the church... Right now, we do not have an overcoming bride. We do not have a bride without spot or wrinkle. We've got a few remnants here or there, but we don't have a bride. We don't have a bride that talks to each other. We have a bride that has an autoimmune disease. A serious, if you study autoimmune disease, that's what we are right now. So somewhere inside of that body of Christ, we've got to be the ecclesia more than we are the family of God. The family of God is very important in a church. They are the ones who get people born again. They're the ones who disciple them. They're the ones who hold their hands. They're the ones who help them get healed, delivered, all those things. <clears throat> very important. But if they only stay there, they never come out of their house. That's all they can understand is taking care of their house. But God's part of his church is the ecclesia, which literally, as all of you know, means the legislative or the governing branch of God. That's the warrior side of God. <clears throat> it's the side that says, we are going to take the authority that Jesus gave us and kick the enemy out of all these kingdoms. To do that, we've got to have a united front. I can't win a war, I say this to you all the time, with just special ops. You can't. The enemy knows that. So right now in this next season of our nation, you're going to see the enemy coming after the church like he's never come after it. He's already put out <clears throat> with the Homeland Security, he's already put out an edict that said <clears throat> anyone that ha doesn't have the same political mindset we do is considered a homegrown terrorist. <clears throat> Are you hearing me? So if you don't think like the current political leadership that's in place, they can switch it to where you're, you're an opposing terrorist. I'd be like a uh, hundred million people right now. Okay. The other thing is 
they are going to go after the churches. They are going to go after the churches. And that's where we're going to have to decide who's our boss. Who are we going to listen to? Okay. If it's, you know, <clears throat> Jesus was so good at this, and I think we need to reread all the ways he dealt with Rome. <clears throat> he came in one of the most difficult times in the world because he had not only a political nation that was Rome overruling Israel, but he also had a religious nation that was in cahoots with the political nation, the Herodian and the Pharisaical spirit. But he came in in that time to show us, to demonstrate to us, how do you deal with this? Because notice what happened when the people's hearts started changing. You see, that's been our big, big problem is we're always trying to legislate the heart. Until you change the heart, you can't legislate the heart. Our government, our civil government, was designed to be led by moral men and women that had a heart for God. If you take our form of government and let it be led by people that are not, it doesn't work as well. Do you see that? It's just, it's a horrible way to do it because they don't have that heart that is needed to do that. So you and I are here because this is the season and the time that he's saying, this is how we have to advance this next season. Do we want the glorious, victorious church? Yeah, I don't think anybody's opposed. But it means you're going to have to start carrying the glory. It means we no longer have enough time for you to have your little piddly fit. Can I just be honest? We just don't have time. I mean, <clears throat> we don't have time for you to compromise. I know I'm, I'm being harsh, but I'm being very serious. We don't have time for you to compromise. Uh, so many things we have given into the enemy on that we're not even aware. He's slowly, he's very much like, you remember how I talk about the glow worm and the snail? He's come in and he stuck his little <laughs> antenna up into that snail and he's slowly anesthetizing it. You're going to have to somewhere say, okay, God, pull out all those little antennas. Pull out all those little things that have made me comfortable where I am. <clears throat> to be the glorious, victorious church, we're going to have to bring a different power of Holy Spirit than we've ever brought. And we can't bring that power of Holy Spirit until we release it through us. So <clears throat> let's think of it like this. If 70% of your cells are still blocking the glory of God, that's how much power you're getting to bring in. It's just that 30%. Okay. Because 70% of you is still not carrying it, not wanting to be in agreement with it. The enemy's counting on that with America. Because notice this is the last state or nation he's really come to. Did you see that? All, all the other places have been somewhat compromised, not completely, but somewhat. Um, we have remnants in different places where they finally fought against certain things. But this is the big stand. <clears throat> Chuck Pierce said that if Trump didn't get elected, that by 2026, America would look like China. China. Communist China. We all get that? <coughs> China. Now, we can sit here and try and do everything we can in the natural to stop that. We can part, be a part of all the protest groups. We can do all these things. And we want to bring election integrity. We want to do that. But I want you to see this morning, what is the higher thing? And the higher thing is that the global agenda is not only at our door, it has invaded our house. It's in every room 
of our house. And it full well knows that if it can keep us divided, leaderless, <laughs> undecided, <clears throat> then it can get to stay in the house. But it knows that the true authority lies within that group if it rises up and said, no, you may not be in my house. Then it has no choice. Because literally, Satan knows he's already defeated. He's just trying to do as much damage and harm as he can to God's family. That's what he's counting on. He's collateral damage out the wazoo. He cares not. And he's convinced all these legions of people that he is God. Because he's shown them something that they recognize, and that's power. He can make them rich in a heartbeat. He can make them famous in another heartbeat. He can give them power over people and monies and nations. He can do that. And he has. But the only thing we've got is to demonstrate that we have the higher power. We have the ability through our God to do those things and more. Can God make you rich in a day? Yes. Sure. <clears throat> Can he make you famous in a day? Can he make you have influence? You know, there's this wonderful thing called influence equity. <clears throat> it means that you have a lot of clout in being able to influence people. It's a real thing. God is wanting a people to rise up. He's wanting the no names. He's wanting the people that don't have fame. He's wanting the people that just have such a heart at like David. Do you hear me? That <clears throat> when they walk in and someone's yelling about their God, they're like, why are we letting him do that? Why are we letting this giant say that? Mm -hmm. This is that day. This is that day. You were in that season, that moment, where it's going to get really difficult for you to be who he wants you to be if a lot of you is still agreeing with what the enemy's agenda is. So we got to change our mindsets. We got to change. We got to be educated. Okay. You need to know who the enemy is. Any warrior will tell you you have to know two things. Know yourself and know the enemy that you're against. Truthfully, most of you don't know yourself. You know a false self. You know a false identity. You do not know who God says you are. And that is so important. If you don't get your true identity, you'll never be able to stand up in this war because you'll always be giving in to that false identity. <clears throat> so that's your first step. You've got to get to the place where you say, God, anything that's in me that's not really my identity, anything, you know, I even said one time, if my false identity believes that I love chocolate more than anything and I remember saying it then take away chocolate and the whole time I'm holding my breath hoping my new identity loves chocolate <clears throat> but somewhere in, it, it's that simple okay it's that simple we're gonna have to do our jobs here on earth that's true we have to go to work we have to be with people. We have to do our stuff. That's God's not changing that. But he's changing what glory you bring to that. So somewhere in us, we've got to figure out. And in Ephesians, <clears throat> it gives you, that's why I'm saying, this, this is my it. Because if the body of Christ does not get the book of Ephesians, 
we're never going to make it out. <laughs> we're never going to make it out. Because <clears throat> that's my calling book. I mean, I pray that book. I know you guys don't even understand it. But I literally bind that book to you every day. Every day. I bind Isaiah 60, Isaiah 61, and Ephesians because those are my calling scriptures. Those are the ones I'm bringing. And I said, bind it to them so they can't get out of it, wrap it around them, put it in them. Okay, why? Because if you don't get that, we're not getting out of this. Okay, <clears throat> I, I get about five people, maybe a few more, at least every two weeks that are going, is this the end times? I go, we're going to be in the end times for probably a thousand years, so get over it. <laughs> yeah, roll up your rapture rug. I like that. <laughs> I'm going to have to remember that one. Is that not perfect? Roll up your rapture rug. I love that. That's so good. <laughs> I'm just figuring I'm going to run past the finish line. If you run track, you do not aim at the finish line, you aim past it. Past it. There you go. There you go. But this is what the enemy's done, is he's kept a whole group of our brothers and sisters trapped so they, they don't even fight against this because they think this is what has to come before Jesus comes back. Okay. I agree that we have a battle here, okay? But this battle is for you and I to be trained. Mm -hmm. If we are to co-rule and reign with Jesus, everybody realizes that's what we're supposed to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're co-ruling, co, C-O, co-ruling and reigning with Jesus. How many of you feel qualified right now to do that? Think about that. We're talking Jesus. <laughs> okay. Do we have the character of Jesus inside of us enough that we could, when he says, okay, you got this one, go ahead and rule on that. <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, there's think. So he's got to give us some kind of training. He's got to build us up so that we can be equal. Are you getting that? See, when I, I just thought Jesus would take care of all of it. That was my hope. You know, I wouldn't have to do a whole lot. I'd just be the pretty bride. Did y'all think about that? That is not what he says. A war bride. You know, the combat boots under the dress kind of thing. But we can't get that experience and that training unless we go through something. This is the something. And that this, we're willing. That we're willing. That's exactly it. We have to be willing to go to training. And like I was sharing with this group this last weekend, I showed up on the first night <clears throat> and they had me speak and it just kept getting heavier in the room. <laughs> and he Now this is just to leaders, okay? This is just to pastors, okay? That was by invite only. And it kept getting heavier and I thought, oh my gosh, if I survive this, <laughs> okay? And I was like, okay, do I go on? God said, keep going. I'm like, okay. So I kept pushing the, the mm -hmm. stuff back and it just kept getting heavier and heavier. Mm -hmm. And finally the apostle, he came to me later and he goes, I realized this, we're not ready for you yet. <laughs> no, no, no. And he said, but we need to be. And he said, you have so blown my mind. And he said, this is a man that has uh, started 65 churches all over everywhere. I mean, he's like had networks and thousands. Okay. I'm so messed up right now. He goes, just from that one little talk that I, I, we're going to need to have you back. Okay. <laughs> but we need to give you the whole weekend and we only need to bring in certain people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That are willing. That are willing <laughs> to hear. <laughs> and so what it was interesting is 
is I kept saying, well, are you sure? You know, because I'm fine. And he goes, oh, no, we're sure. We just don't know. We, we've got to create the right place for you to do this. Because he said, he said, I have been, and he's, you know, in his late, his 60s, and he said, I've never heard this. Do you hear me? I've never heard this. And I thought, that is why God keeps saying to me, this is it. This is a time for you to share it. And I'm not the only one, but I am one. And so he's going to have me called out and sent to these places and to do this. But this is the difference. You guys have heard me say this over and over <laughs> and over. So he expects you to duplicate that quicker and to be that faster. Because I can't do that whole thing. None of us can. But if we all start taking it back, we can. So this is boot camp. And what the guy said to me is he says, I know we're sp- I've got a group that's supposed to be special ops. But he says, I just realized to do that, you have to go through Hell Week. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> you hearing me? Mm-hmm. Not many people in their right minds sign up for Hell Week. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, you can't get to the other side until you survive mm-hmm. Hell Week. You know the attrition or dropout rate for SEALs? Something like 90-something percent. Mm -hmm. Even higher. Do you hear me? Because they can't handle Hell Week. I believe God has designed these battles so that you and I have to rely on Him. Because if it's going to happen, it's not going to happen because of our intelligence. Mm -hmm or our strength. It's going to happen because we allow his intelligence and his strength to come through us. Mm -hmm. And that's where we have to get out of this natural let me fix it thing Mm -hmm. to Mm -hmm. the unseen, the spiritual dimension where we're saying we trust in him. And if this happens, it's only going to happen Mm -hmm. because he's flowing through me and with me to make it happen. That's a whole different place. Most of us do not want to put ourselves in that place. We don't want to put ourselves in a place where if this fails, it's because I didn't let him show up. Because we like to cushion that, you know. Well, if this doesn't happen, you know, we got a backup plan and another backup plan. Burn the ships. Burn the ships. You hear what I'm saying? I hate that song. Because the first thing I'm thinking is, Let's go get the wood. Take the wood off the ship and bring it to the island. You know, I'm like, it's finished wood. You don't have to start. <laughs> See how I think. You can take, we can not have a ship, but let's dismantle the thing rather than. <laughs> I'm just like that. <clears throat> I don't need a bonfire. I need a house. <clears throat> but do you get that image? We don't put ourselves in that position. It's an uncomfortable position. Because in our lives, we all have examples of where we didn't think God showed up. Where we asked him to do something, prayed for something, begged him for something, and it didn't happen. And so those frequencies of those cellular memories are constantly vibrating in us going, do you really want to put yourself in that corner? Do you really want to see if God will show up this time or not? Am I talking to myself? No. <clears throat> That's what he's asking us. He's asking us, will you be the glorious, victorious church? To do that, you can no longer take it as Sunday school. This isn't Sunday school. I mean, it's not even close to Sunday school. This is even close to church. This is war. But we have to have a different mindset on what that war means. That war is not talking about getting volunteers to go to another nation and fight. It's right here. 
It's in your county. It's in your city government. It's in your schools. It's in your hospitals. It's in your universities. It's here. Whether or not they recognize they've come into agreement with that global agenda, I don't know. I really don't. I think some people know and they don't care. But I think the majority are just like the Chamber of Commerce. They thought it was a good idea. Gary thought it was a good idea to have kids trained to be working. And I said, you're missing the whole bigger piece. And he goes, our local chamber doesn't care about that. I go, I know. But what they don't understand is they're being fed information. They're being fed a bill of goods to make them come into agreement with it. It's, it's everywhere. Now, it's not to be depressing. It's so you can know your enemy. And we can't fight this enemy just like I couldn't. I mean, I had a husband who was president of the chamber. I couldn't fight it like that because there was no understanding in them. Do you understand? There was no understanding in them that we are signing up to do the devil's work. Hello? That didn't make sense to them. It's not what they do. But here, God was saying, how do you overcome it? So what I did was since my husband had authority, <laughs> yeah, and we're one. <laughs> I just went in and shh. You see. So they're not as bad as they used to be. Let's put it that way. But it is because the enemy has a frequency over our nation that most people can't get out from under. You will have to get out from under that frequency to begin to hear these things of God. His frequency is like that white noise that's over a nation. And so many people, when the white noise gets turned off, they are unfamiliar with that sound of silence. And so they go hunting the white noise. Do you hear me? They hunt the white noise. What you and I have to do is take away the white noise of the enemy and replace it with the sound of God. So it will draw them. It will be something they can be comfortable with and want to be a part of. So it sounds like crazy. I mean, it really does. In most churches, I could never say this kind of thing because it would almost be like I'm coming against their church. And in reality, that's true because they've come into agreement. So if he calls us to be the salt and the light, we have to realize what that really means. And if the land is covered with darkness. The people are covered with deep darkness. Remember, the land can't sin. It can just be recipient of what the people do on the land that sin. And their sin is then deposited onto the land, the organizations, the cultures, the structures. So I want you to think, right now, we're buried as America under a lot of layers of sin. We're not sin ourselves, but we're buried under it. And what God is saying to us is we've got to get rid of those layers. We that know that those layers were not God's will, we have to clean house. We have to rip that sin off the cultures, the people, the organizations, all of creation, so that it can breathe and do what it was originally designed to do. You realize the trees are, we all know this scientifically, they're here to help us breathe. Did you think about that? They're here to help us breathe 
So when they were filled with the glory of God via Holy Spirit, they were the breath. Isn't it crazy? But yet we've shut them down to where we almost can't grasp a breath. The food was supposed to re-energize us and sustain us and do all these things. But we put so much sin on all of our food that it can no longer bring us the sustenance it's supposed to bring to us. The enemy has done this over thousands of years as a plan. But in a day, that's what God says. In a day, he can change it around. But his tool for changing it is you and I. He's not coming down here to clean this up. So the question becomes, how long are we going to live in it? I know all of you have different levels of cleanliness in your homes. Some of you are OCD on steroids. <laughs> and you have to have everything immaculate. It has to be in its place. And some of you can just live in it. It's just not a big problem. And some of you say, I haven't got time for this. Okay. Everybody has their things, okay, that we can live in. But when you really start to see in the spirit realm what kind of garbage we're living in right here, in a, in a city, in a nation... How, how deep that junk really is. Nobody would live in barnyard conditions. I mean, well, most people wouldn't. I do know a few. But they wouldn't. Why are we? Is it because we don't see the barnyard? Is it because we don't see the sin? Is it because we don't see the layers of perversion? That's on us? Mm. So we have to see it so we can get rid of it so the glory can come. You see why this is such a big deal? So God told me that the first of this year that he was going to start calling me to go out and do that because we need a whole lot more people than two. Okay, We need a whole lot more people to do this. <laughs> Just say it. So at first I was like, well, yeah, sure. And now it's already started. And they're wanting same weeks and they're wanting all these things. And so this is how I know it's God in a major way. It's kind of a sneaky thing, but to get my husband to go with me to one of my conferences, it was like I had to promise, you know, all kinds of things. <laughs> and so to get to get him to go this last week, he was all excited because it was Branson and he thought he might could golf, you know, and, and all this stuff. And when it got to the time where I needed to minister he was right behind every person like a sandwich and so he was just getting words of knowledge and just praying for him and all this stuff and I'm thinking this is good (laughs) so then I said now I have to be here this week and here this week and he goes well okay I think I can work that into my schedule (laughs) I said you want to go he goes, yeah. I said, you realize you have to pay for yourself to go. Because <laughs> I don't usually have enough budget for you and me to, you know. <laughs> I can't demand they pay for my husband to go. Be known as the prayer team. The prayer, yeah, there you go. He goes, no, I think I can, I can do that. Do you hear me? So God is shifting even him. Because it's not his most comfortable place. But yet God has already, he's already shown him what they need. Mothers and fathers. What they need are apostles. You get it? And so to bring that light, I can set that atmosphere with him there. 
So that's what I'm encouraging you. Take that next step. This is a season where God's saying, I got this. If you'll help me, I can pour all this into you. Mm -hmm. And it will be hell week. But I want to show you how much you can really, really do. So the first thing I hear is you better start working on your emotions. If you have unredeemed emotions yet, still, you may want to work on them. <laughs> Anything from hope deferred to anger to this is unfair. Why do I have to deal with this family? Preach. Okay. I mean, you know, what did I do to deserve this? <laughs> well, everything you did, you just did well. God knows that we can do this, but Satan knows your buttons. He knows your triggers, and he is going to trigger you and trigger you and trigger you till you get rid of the triggers. Are you hearing me? Fear, some of you are so overwhelmed with fear that you don't realize it, but the instant something shows up, health crisis, somebody in your family has a situation, fear sucks right the very air out of you. You can't go there. You can't go there. Because this is the season the enemy is going to push your triggers. If you think some guy that controls the whole world through this global elite is going to be upset to kill you, you got another thing coming. But if you ever grasp who you really are, if you ever grasp your true identity, you are a king's kid. You should be walking around on this planet saying, the very nerve of you uncircumcised Philistine to talk about my God. But I'm going to tell you, he's after your emotions and you better get, this is the month, you better start listening. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Just so you know, he will try to keep you isolated he will try to keep you so unfocused. He'll try to keep you so busy putting out little fires everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, and he'll bring your attention to things like Davos, which truly, once you read all that stuff, you're going to go, what on earth? Mm -hmm. They control everything. Mm -hmm. They control everything. Except us. And as soon as we take our, that's why they're pushing so hard. As soon as we take our place, I'm telling you, they know they're going to lose. But we've got to be that last place. I fully intend that America will not look like China in 2026. Oh, amen. Amen. I fully intend that we will <clears throat> stop the enemy's plans. Yes. I fully intend that we will be willing to sacrifice our natural things so we can be everything he's asking us to be. So how much glory are you carrying today? How much excitement to even be in the battle? Gary says, I'm an adrenaline junkie. It's really not true. I'm just an adrenaline junkie in certain areas. Because... I was made for a time like this. So were you. So were you. And we can't do it alone. We know that. This is the time where the ecclesia must rise up together. And even though we may not all think the same way, uh, that's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It means we'll just be able to outthink the enemy because we all think different ways. But God's going to unite us in an interesting way through the Holy Spirit, binding us together, linking us together so every joint can supply to the other joint. A lot of times my physical body will manifest in certain 
<clears throat> ways for the body of Christ. And as a lot of the healing team can tell you, for the last few months, I don't really even remember now how long it's been, my left hip has gone through just about everything I can think of. Okay. And um, I look like a hop along, a cripple, or whatever, because it's, it's in pain. The joints in pain, the muscles are in pain, the nerves are in pain, and it takes forever to warm it up, okay, and to do all these things. And it, I didn't injure it. Let me make this abundantly clear. I didn't fall off a horse like I've been known to do, or wreck a motorcycle, or you know, I didn't even jump out of an airplane. It was just like it just showed up. <laughs> okay, so let me make that clear. And I said, God, what is this? And then they begin to tell me things like, well, your left side's your spiritual side. And you remember when Jacob wrestled? Okay. I'm not going to let go until we get what we need. So I really hope you guys jump it up a little bit. Okay. If y'all could just do your parts, let's just get it. No. <coughs> but I... But he said, will that stop you? Well, I just wanted to lay down and, you know, baby it. He goes, no, 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 no. <laughs> you get up and go get on the plane. So that's what I'm saying here today. We've got obstacles before us. He's going to show us how to overcome them. But how do you get filled with the glory? I'm going to ask you that. How do you get your cells to start radiating the glory? Well, the first thing, you're going to have to remove the stuff that's in your cells. Mm -hmm. The wrong frequencies, the wrong mindsets, the wrong memories. <laughs> you're going to have to remove those, get them rid. And then say, Holy Spirit, come in and fill it up. I have no idea what it's going to look like filled up. I, I really think some of us will be walking almost not touching earth. When we get that full. Just think of that. Because we can defy gravity. We can actually say, I carry the glory of God. So this is an exciting day. Can everybody feel it? So do not let the sounds of the enemy get you down. Do not let executive orders get you down. Do not let... What's happening in this world overtake you because that's the plan of the enemy to get you so hopeless like we've done all this work and they've wiped it out in two weeks. <laughs> no, they haven't. No, they haven't. They haven't even touched it. But if you and I don't take our place, that's what Jesus died for, for us to take our original place. I want everything around me to carry glory. I want the trees to carry glory. I want everything, everything in this room, every person. Can you imagine? Yes. To do that, you can't lay on the floor, even though I'm not opposed to you laying on the floor. But you're going to have to build up your spiritual muscles by faith. So by faith means that God's going to create these opportunities that look hopeless and non-winnable in the natural. So you will engage your faith, so you build up your faith muscles, so you can carry more of the glory. He's been working on me for 38 years to learn how to carry glory. If I got today, if I had been given that 38 years ago, I would have been way past on the floor because I didn't have enough spiritual muscles to carry that. As he's put through me through one test, after another test, after another trial, after another training, it builds my muscles. So I stop looking at the natural and I realize I've got the muscles to carry that glory because the glory is a weight. It's not a burden, it's a weight. So you and I must get ourselves ready so say, okay, Holy Spirit, bring them on. Let's go. Can I have the patience of Job with my children? 
can I tell my husband I love him and kind of semi I almost really believe it? We're here, people. <laughs> can I tell my employer who's the devil's incarnate? <laughs> of course I can do that. And with great joy and glory. And then send a glory bomb to him. Y'all aren't using your glory bombs. <laughs> yeah. These are serious weapons. You can just fire whenever. So, Father God, I just thank you today. <sighs> I thank you that you are breathing into us. Fresh hope, fresh life, fresh glory, Father. So, Father, we are probably some of those people that are in deep darkness. We don't want to be. We want to be in your light. So move us through this darkness to your light. Build our faith muscles. Help us create a vessel that can truly carry the glory of God like your original Adam did. A vessel that is in harmony with everything you created. A vessel that's bringing light and life and love every second of every day, no matter what obstacles come against us. And Father, we choose this day to come against all the unredeemed emotions. And we say we will work on them. Because there's nothing that is stopping us but us. So Father, I just pray an anointing on each and every person that's in this room or that's hearing this recording. An anointing to break through. An anointing to be long-suffering. An anointing to say, I will never give up, no matter what. And if I die, I die. I will never give up until thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And it is my warrior creed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.